Now a first carry for Isaiah Crowell. season and the Browns have taken the early lead so a designed run all the way and he took it the distance I don't know that anybody saw that come and now Cleveland geared up to take the field and they had to wait a long time to get the football back probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive summit agreed what you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly right hoping for a three and out so that didn't happen you can't yell at your D for that they've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field so the incomplete pass brings up second down yardage on the play back at his own 19 yard line it goes as a loss of six and now third down well that's the big drawback to this play even if somehow the quarterback pitches it he's not immune to the big hit in this case he kept it and absorbed it anyway he'll look to throw he's gonna air one out and he can't hang on to it nearly picked he's known for his hands defensively The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They got to feel pretty good about that. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Khalil Mack coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Bro. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked up by Carl Joseph. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the The Browns offense trotting back on the field. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. Escaping, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. The second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Well, there they went blitz defensively, Charles, and things were paved well coming from the linebacker position. I love the way that you described it, paved well. Oftentimes, the guy who gets home on the blitz, he's going to get all the credit. But his teammates did all the dirty work, right? They ran into people on purpose. They sometimes tugged on jerseys to hold linemen to create space and gaps. And that play finished off really, really well. Well conceived, well designed. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They're going to look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. 
The Browns on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. In just two minutes time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. Now back to throw. Trying to lay one up deep. Oh, wide open, complete. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch in the end zone again. They know it's not easy. It's caught inside the 25. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. seven yard line now whistles and the Raiders are going to signal for a timeout it's just their first so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime they'll look to throw a little dump off for Corral and he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37 it's a gain of 10 and the Browns are going to get a first down Back to throw here. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Khalil Mack in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. No roll. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Now the right. able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in O. And the 
This one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Now this time he'll look to throw. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 35. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it, the benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. He may try and run for this. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A gain of eight on the keeper and a first down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some, it's a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Cleo Mack's starting to get a really big-time reputation as a pass rusher, and rightly so. So explosive off the edge getting to the quarterback. But he doesn't neglect his run duties as well. How about that tackle right there? Such a package he has. Able to play the run and the pass so well. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now a play fake here on first down. Incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Let's go! They'll drop the throw. Going underneath for Crowell. It's a gain of five. And that's going to bring up the third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes the play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And he's going to be out of bounds, down inside the five at the four. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Didn't yeah, they? when we talked about him, they yeah, 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 you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue. To Four, it's second and goal. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. It's their quarterback. A four-yard touchdown. to the clear, the 20, and he is into the end zone, touchdown Cleveland, their mobile agile quarterback, an 80-yard touchdown, and the Browns have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter.
And that rushing touchdown, his fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it, but he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game. Get this one up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Here we go, Ohio. And incomplete on the deep ball. There was definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened there. you think there. that factored him? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. So those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Let's go! He's back to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Griffin. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. And, boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with the football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number. Can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that